Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and also touching on important topics like gambling. And so we're honored to have with us Dr. Jim Whalen. He is a psychology professor and he's also the director of the University of Memphis Institute for Gambling Education and Research. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks. So we'll dive in. And when you talk about the holidays and gambling and online gambling and sports and all of that, there's a lot to dive into in terms of the landscape, what's going on, and obviously how we can be more mindful and intentional. But um, give us a little bit of background for you personally of how you got into this space of gambling. Well, I, I was a faculty member here at the U of M, and um, I was working with some students in our training clinic where uh, students offer mental health services to folks in the community. And a gentleman came in presenting with depression, but really his story focused on the fact that um, he was gambling and and um, and that both the highs and lows of his life were about gambling. It was, it was at that time then that I realized I was talking with a colleague here and a couple of graduate students. And it was shortly after um, the casino started opening up in Tunica the the access to gambling was growing all over the United States. And we realized that this was something that was impacting our community and that our backgrounds, the research we had been doing might be applicable here. So that's when, uh, that was in 1999. And um, we started digging in and realizing we could make a contribution and help people in our world. Absolutely. You mentioned Tunica, the casinos, there's that piece of it, but then the proliferation of all of the online sports betting. Talk about kind of the landscape of what you're seeing right now and how that obviously impacts what we're talking about. Yeah, well, we're we're still uh, riding a wave where access to gambling continues, where at one point in time, before we start the clinic, you used to have to travel to Atlantic City or, or, or to, to Nevada. Um, and then it became you could drive to someplace within a couple hundred miles of your home. And now we're in a world where most people can pick up their phone or get on their laptop and and place a bet. Um, and this is growing rapidly and there's reasons for it to grow rapidly, but uh, it expands people's access. And it, it we always when we talk about this, we always are also ignoring that there's lots of venues for illegal gambling that occur and are very much part of the landscape, uh, both here and nationwide. Yeah, that's a very good point. So give us some background when you talk about the efforts and what all you do with the University of Memphis Institute for Gambling Education and Research, acronym TIGER, talk about uh, the program. Yeah, well, we as I said, we started with that one individual and what we realized in the literature is gambling research and as we entered this millennium looked like alcohol research from the 1950s and there was a lot of work to do so we first dug in on how do we uh, how do we assess this problem how do we know when people have a problem how do we know what they need for treatment and then turn to well how how do we treat them then um, since then we've done research in a variety of areas that's related to it but we've always come back to centering on how can we facilitate research-based, empirically-based ways of helping people? And in 2006, we started partnering with the um, uh, Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. They've been a, a funder of ours. And um, uh, in order to develop uh, a program where we think we can maximize effectiveness while minimizing the cost. Gamblers don't have a lot of money most of the time. So how do we provide services to them in a, in a cost-effective manner? And so we're right now, because of the sports wagering money, the legislators uh, actually put aside 5% of the state uh, proceeds to go to gambling treatment. And we've been working with the state now to expand what we've been doing. We've opened up a second treatment center in East Tennessee, particularly dealing with uh, rural America, Appalachia, very different than the community we deal with mostly here in West Tennessee. And um, and also our next step is to develop a an online portal. We have a website now, but it's very, it's very basic. And what we're really hoping to do 
this year, starting hopefully in January, but in the years that come is to develop a, a, an, a place for people both who have problems or have a loved one who has a problem that they can access support, help, make an appointment for treatment, try some online self-help tools. Um, so with the idea that we can create in Tennessee a, um, a very new model for how to use both professional access as well as technology to facilitate people making changes in their life. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, let's dive in a little bit because I've got a lot of questions in terms of, I think, you know, what the audience would want to know and what could be extremely helpful. And I think so much of this, you mentioned in many cases, not necessarily having a lot of money, but gambling and, you know, just like the lottery, there's a strike it rich, you know, like I could be wealthy one, you know, one lucky roll, one lucky spin, one lucky, you know, pick of the lottery numbers and, and I could, you know, change my life. And so there's that piece of it in terms of seeking that kind of gratification, that instant win that could change your life. At the same time, though, what you put at stake and what you can lose. And so talk about kind of how you start to assess does someone have a problem? Is this an innocent, you know, just kind of, you know, mental break or is this now becoming serious and where it can be, you know, literally like they could lose everything? How how do you start diving in and asking those sort of questions? Yeah, well, uh, let me preface it with with a point because you, 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 you mentioned something about the fact that when you gamble, you might win. And and this is this relates to the fact why gambling treatment and assessment is different than substance abuse. Nobody nobody goes out for the night, drinks their head off, thinking the next morning they're going to wake up and the world's going to be a better place. But people do. The Powerball up over a billion dollars. You know it. Everybody thinks if I just win this. Every, all my problems are going to disappear. And so that's one of the ways in which gambling is different from substance abuse. And one of the ways it's a little harder for people to detect because they have hope. You know, I've, I'm down, I've lost money, but I might gain money back. So I start thinking about what, what are the really important things to figure? And this is where our research has gone to help people be more aware when they have a problem and how to make that change, how to start making the change. That awareness for many people is dependent on feeling the financial distress of their history of gambling. So I think most people who come into treatment, it's it's that financial distress that's driving the need to do this. But there are other things that people should be paying attention to before that. And that is, if you are lying to people, if you're hiding it, if it's a secret in your life, take a moment and say, mm, is a secret really important to me? Is this is this something I should get behind? Other things that are really that are, that are real early indicators um, is if you need to borrow money to gamble, if you need to dip into resources, take a second mortgage out, maybe um, borrow from an aunt or an uncle, um, uh, those sort of things to make it happen. Also, the amount of time you spend preoccupied with gambling and how, what are your bet, next bet going to make? So, you know, particularly in this day of sports wagering, one of the things we see is, is people who now chisel out a chunk of their day to start saying, what games am I going to bet on? And then become glued to games and make really risky bets like parlays or live bets within the game. And you got to start thinking, if I'm doing this without a sense of where I'm at, and I'm not planning for this, they're all the primary indicators that say, maybe I need to do something different. Yeah, fertile ground for sure in terms of, you know, when you start putting that sort of money at risk and like you said, taking out a second mortgage or something like that and, and having to borrow money from relatives. But I also think it's a great warning sign for this conversation for loved ones who, you know, if, if you have a loved one that's starting to ask you for money and you start noticing these signs, and I think now too, the prevalence of this being on social media where you see the Instagram and the TikTok videos of people, you know, sitting there at the slot machine and people are just watching them. Slide. So I think you're it's in front of you now 24 seven. And so being mindful, you know, especially for parents and loved ones of what the others are doing and yourself. And like you said, with your time, I think is a, a great starting point to say, hey, do I have an issue here? 
So what, you know, if you notice a loved one that does have an issue, obviously pointing them in your direction, but how do you start to have that sort of conversation and start turning, turning them toward the, the, the light, so to speak? Yeah, that's an excellent question, because in the U.S., we live under this myth because of TV shows that the thing you do is you get everybody together and you confront. And I don't know about you. If people confront me about something, uh, I feel like I'm painted in a corner. I'm going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm going to get angry and I'm not going to do anything. Um, Making people defensive is the wrong way to go about it. It's really about reaching out and caring about somebody, letting them know you love them and letting them know that you want to help them. Um, It's also helped them see the pain you're experiencing around it. And, And then probably the most important thing you could do is to listen to them. Um, A lot of times when we feel that someone's doing something wrong, and this includes gambling or uh, substance use is the same thing, we have a tendency to want to tell them what to do. And it is so much better to take a seat back first and listen to them and to sort of say, how how can help occur? When I talk to people about it, one of the things is our tendency is to want people to to start leading a march in a certain direction. And that's not what we want. We want to stroll. You know, like if you're walking with a friend somewhere, you you may not decide exactly where you're going, but there are little gestures and there's little movements. And a lot of that is that listening, that expressing care, support, and saying, I want to help you. You, You're struggling and I'm here for you. Yeah, great advice. You mentioned the website and some of the things that are coming, you know, in in the future here soon. How can we point individuals to you? What does that process look like in terms of referring people, opening the access? How does that process work? Well, we have a website now. So it's it's thegamblingclinic.com, no spaces, thegamblingclinic.com. And that is our clinic. Um, and we offer both in-person and telehealth services to anyone in in Tennessee. Um, uh, We also have a phone number, which is um, 901-678-7678. And then finally, an email address. Um, uh, We're also, and and that is gambling at memphis.edu. So any of those mechanisms, I think that online, if people have online access, getting to the clinic website's the easiest one to remember, and the the gambling clinic. There's a, an international center for responsible gaming, and I think it's great acknowledgement for you, but obviously for the Mid South and the work you're doing to recently be named the 2022 ICRG, so International Center for Responsible Gaming Scientific Achievement Award for outstanding contributions in the field of behavioral addictions and specifically gambling disorders. What does that mean for you in terms of acknowledgement of this research and the work you're doing, but also obviously for the University of Memphis in the center? Well, you know, for me, it's it's um, it's a very sweet acknowledgement. The 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 people in the the people who gave that award are people who I've known for a while and I have great respect for. They're they're the the pioneers in this area and and for them to recognize our work is uh and, and my role in it yeah that's just really very very nice it also is real recognition of over the years the many doctoral students that have worked in this lab and 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 that's one of them some of them have become leading gambling researchers in this country so so that that was very nice i also think that on the broader level and what it means here for for us in 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 our corner of tennessee is we've actually built um, a a center that looks at both research and research-informed treatment, and we're a world leader. Um, You know, it's it's that people, we produce knowledge that impact people's lives all over the world. I mean, we did studies early, uh, a decade or so ago, that that a few years ago, was recognized by Australia and was part of informing national policy in Australia. Um, we've also worked with some of the leading 
gaming companies in the United States about how to how to how to fulfill their corporate responsibilities. So, so I, it's been a great opportunity, and I'm glad I can contribute. Um, and I'm glad I've had really smart, energetic partners in our in our doctoral students. And uh, and I think the best thing for all all of us in Tennessee is w this vision of this website is informed by the 20 years we've been working at this. And I think it makes Tennessee, a, we have the potential of a state of the art program to help people who struggle with gambling. And if we can help people, uh, and that's just a wonderful thing. Absolutely. And that's why I love being able to have this show is we get to spotlight the good that's being done and, you know, highlight and celebrate the work that's being done right here locally, but does have a global impact. And then also at the same time, genuinely give people a conduit to get help, the help that they need to be successful. And so really on both sides, shining a bright light, but then, you know, pointing people in the right direction to get help is to me so, so important. Wrap up again. You mentioned the contact information, but mention it again. Website, phone number, where do we go to get plugged in and uh, and, and take advantage of these opportunities? Sure. It's the gambling clinic, no spaces.com. That's our website, and it will be our new website. Phone number is 901-678-7678. And then an email address, which is, mem is gambling at memphis.edu. Well, Dr. Jim Whalen, congratulations on the success, the recent thank acknowledgement, you. and uh, thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for giving us some time. I appreciate it. And um, I hear from people if they have questions or needs.